the three that I've written down, and I'll go into a little bit more detail around them. Number one, developing buy-in and making sure that you're inspiring the footballers in the program. Number two, learn the game plan and the training demands. And then number three, developing resistance, uh, resilience, sorry, resilient athletes through um, a gradual loading program, uh, as well as injury mitigation, both in the gym and on the field, and then uh, some mental resilience through uh, reference points over pre-season. So to go back onto that first point, it uh, doesn't matter how um, smart you are with your program, if the athletes aren't bought in and, and don't believe and they not don't feel inspired that this is going to move the needle for their uh, athlete development, but also their ability to play the fo- play the game uh, and play the role that the coach um, needs them to do for the team, um, then their a level of intent and effort to work for you is is going to be small. So, number one, if you're moving to a club or maybe you're moving into a new role, I think from my experience in developing buying and inspiring the athletes. Um, that you really care, uh, that you know what you're doing. Um, so from a, from a confidence point of view, they've got confidence and trust in you. Number two, learn the game plan and training demands. So whether you're a player, of course, you're going to need to learn how the coaches want to play the game and how your role, uh, how, you know, how to successfully um, play towards how the team wants to play and prepare yourself over preseason to play that position. If you're a co- assistant coach, obviously you want to know how you can assist the uh, head coach in that space. And maybe you're, you've got um, autonomy on one particular line, like might be a midfielder coach. So how can you specifically focus on um, knowing the global game plan and then more specifically how the midfielders are going to play. And then from my perspective as a strength and conditioning coach, it's really, really important that you're not just focusing on how we can make the athletes better in the gym, how can we make them fitter on the field, but it's ultimately all about how to improve them on the football field. So that's number two. Number three, developing resilience, reducing the likelihood of injuries, injury prevention or injury mitigation, however you want to call it. If we have our best players on the park training together, we're going to have strong team cohesion, strong team connection, which is really, really important um, in Australian rules football or any team sport. Um, But also if we can have players playing games consistently together, then the team chemistry and knowing each other's game is going to be at, um, at its peak and at its optimal level. So that's really, really important. So having targets around like having the whole group complete above 80% of time in skills can be a good measure. Moving into the podcast for this week, we have, as I mentioned, it's a massive week for the live show, Prepare Like a Pro live chat show. We have Jared Wade, the high performance manager of the Collingwood Football Club. Uh, so he'll be discussing preseason loading and how to structure physical performance work in season. Uh, He's worked across uh, rugby as well as now working in the AFL uh, at his second club. So he's got a huge amount of experience, both in rehabilitation, strength and conditioning, sports science, and now as a high performance manager. So really looking forward to catching up with Jared. That'll be 1 p.m. on Tuesday. Wednesday, our um, episode with Ben Serple, uh, who I interviewed a couple of weeks ago. He's a performance coach at the Geelong Football Club. Uh, He, uh, we talked about discussing and developing resilience in Australian rules of football. So that episode will be published on our podcast on Wednesday. So make sure to tune in and listen to the recording there. And then on Thursday, today, I didn't interview Phil Morland. Something popped up, so we weren't able to complete that episode. So we've moved that to um, this week's uh, episode. So this Thursday at one o'clock for those listening into the podcast. That's this week for those watching live. Today's Thursday. And then Tyson Popplestoon. He'll be, he's the founder of Rhythm Running. So that'll be at 2.30 p.m. also on Thursday. He'll be discussing um, how to avoid common mistakes with preseason running. So really, really important if you're maybe a parent of a young footballer, you're trying to improve their running capacity or send them um, to a coach or, or perhaps you're helping them with their running um, to avoid these mistakes. And then of course, for strength and conditioning coaches working with footballers, we want to make sure that we're helping athletes uh, avoid these mistakes as well. So that's a real area of expertise for Tyson. So looking forward to catching up with him. Sunday, our bite-sized episode from a recent collab event with social media influencers with Gabe and Lewis, the founders of 9to5 Fitness. That will be released on Sunday. It's a short 15-minute episode. Make sure you tune into that one, especially for those who want to develop an online brand. 